I'm with right now, I'm with uh, Thomas DeMagella, who is with the uh, Italian American Alliance. He's the uh, chairperson of the Strategic Planning Committee there uh, in Massachusetts. And um, Tom, right now you have a law that's uh, almost on the books. It's right, it's right there in committee, and it's there to try and replace uh, Columbus Day with Indigenous Peoples Day. That's a big thing that's going on up there now, right now in Massachusetts. So what, you're, what are you doing right now in your organization to try and stop that and uh, try to keep Columbus Day in Massachusetts? Well, we're doing a lot. Um, first of all, we had to become very familiar with the law, and it's a pending Right now, it's in a committee with several other issues that they're dealing with in regards to uh, state motto and emblems and things of that sort. So it's a separate bill. It's not part of a, a group. So it can be put aside. And that, was, and that was, we found out that they'll have to make a decision by April 15th or extend it. And a, a, usually a bill will come out of that committee and be put to the, the floor. And it's a bill that would absolutely eliminate <clears throat> Christopher Columbus Day as a state holiday. Yeah. And replace it with Indigenous Peoples Day. Yeah. And of course, we definitely think that's a very bad idea. Right. It's not constructive in any way. And it's very insensitive to the Italian American community and a lot of other Americans that still uh, have a connection to celebrating Christopher Columbus uh, Day. It's not on top of it. I mean, a lot of us growing up with that holiday. Right. And it is a national holiday. So the state's going to, it's been sponsored by several legislators. And so it could stay also in the committee and never, and, and sent forward for further study is the category that would go under. And that's what we're hoping would happen is that just don't, just file it away because they don't want to deal with it. And we're trying to make them be very much aware that it's a bad bill. It's not going to be anything that they want to probably support. Uh, there's 800,000 Italian Americans that live in Massachusetts. And what we did as a group, as the Italian American Alliance, with uh, 25 other organizations, we presented ourselves as one unified voice to let them know that we're not invisible. We are people that are, care about this. And it's our Italian American heritage and it's connected to Columbus. It's been there for over a hundred years, being important in the Italian American immigrant community. It started back as far as 1892. There's a lot of history to it. And just to dismiss it or erase it is so insensitive. So we they needed to hear from us. So we worked very hard to get that 25 organizations to sign on one general letter that we sent exp expressing our opinion our position and send it to the, the chairman of both committees, the co-sponsors, and to let them know that we care about this. And then we took it upon ourselves to meet with the chairman of those of that committee and uh, uh, Italian American Caucus also. And so this week we actually met now, if, if my total is correct, between four of us, we met with probably at least almost a dozen legislators including the chairman of those committees and actually had a face to face with them. So we basically presented ourselves and became our own lobbyists. If you want to look at it that way, uh, the price was right. Good for you. Yeah. Here. And to really, and who else could speak for us better, better than anybody is ourselves. And we, we sat down with uh, Sal Di Domenico who was head of the Italian American caucus. He's in the Senate. Uh, we had a very nice uh, conversation expressing what this is all about. I, I had a meeting with the chairman, uh, Antonio Cabral, who's the chairman of the committee that's uh, sponsoring this bill. He has a lot to say about it. Um, I, we, a bunch of us met with our old, own local constituents. I just uh, came for a meeting with my senator and my uh, representative from the House and ex explained, like I'm doing with you right now, the importance of our position and how it affects so many of us in a negative way and that we have a better solution and it, a very nice conversation. I think what we're trying to do is educate, enlighten and understand that there's a better solution than just eradicating uh, Christopher Columbus holiday to bring attention to a group that deserves attention. And that's the native Americans who have a very proud heritage and we want them to be recognized in our state 
And we suggest that they should have their own day, August 8th, which is already on the books as Indigenous Peoples Day mm -hmm. internationally and in America. Mm. In fact, I think they do celebrate it themselves. I've seen them do this on, on occasions. Mm -hmm. And the month of November, uh, we suggest would be their particular month to have um, Indi uh, Native American Indian Heritage Month, which has already been yeah. put on yeah. as a proclamation, if I remember, since 1990 with George Bush. So, right. And I shared some letters with them that have that also came from a couple of indigenous groups or Native American groups that basically support our position. Right. OK. And they were really impressed with that because they only hear from the ones that aren't interested in even compromising. So. Right. This is the gist of the con con uh, conversation, Truby. And, I, and it's, it's really is to enlighten people and let them know where we're coming from. And I shared the books, the, you know, the hero from. Uh, Ortiz, who's uh, a Taino right. ancestor, Delaney's book on the quest. Yeah, sure. uh -huh. These are the real historians yeah. who know the story. And I said, they're the people that will support um, and defend the fake news of fake uh, history that's been, unfortunately, been smearing Columbus for decades. Well, a lobbying effort like this, how many, how many guys, how many of your group showed up at these, uh, you know, to meet with the committee chairman and just the four of us. We all okay. together mm -hmm. and then we kind of split up and did our own thing in our own areas to save time and, and to uh, be more efficient and and do what I just said to you. So I'd say we had I, I, my last kind of said about almost a dozen contacts uh, like I'm talking to you right now. Yeah, sure. Express yeah. Ourselves. And that's what's important. Mm -hmm. And we also found out that the advice we got was we want our members or, or anybody who cares about this. Don't even have to be Italian. Uh, that lives whatever district they are. We said they, you need to send them an email and let them know how you feel about this because they look at your constituents' emails more than a general letter. So if you live in this town, send them an email, let them know you're not in favor of this bill, and you hope that you can have their support. And if enough of you keep doing, they go tick, 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 tick. Oh, the yeah, other right. constituents would not like this if right. I go in court. Right, right. That's how you get their attention. Yeah, it's a numbers game, and you really just got to keep, uh, you got to be very proactive. You just got to keep at it, and you just got to keep going with it. That's really so important. It's a, it's, it's a, yeah, it's a long, it's a long term ongoing battle. What about people from outside the state? Are you asking anybody from outside the state to contact them, maybe chime in and their views and stuff? Or does that help? Well, or? You know what? For what I told, they don't care, you know, because yeah, if they're not right. a, a voting person, it's like a noise to them. That's all. Right. Uh, right. But it doesn't mean that we can't have some support. I'll say we got other sponsors. We got people that, that are fighting for this nationwide and having a success. And Syracuse is a perfect example of it. They yeah. just had a great victory. And got a court order that says that the mayor has no right to take that monument down. And, you know, I did talk to them. I, you helped connect me. Sure, yeah. And a wonderful <laughs> conversation uh, with Bob and learn more about why they're successful. And it has to, it's not an easy task because you really got to have the conviction. And, and they had a good argument legally and they got support from a judge and they put a lot of time and money and effort into it. And they have a passionate uh, group of, uh, What's it called important. ancestors? Yeah, sure. Yeah, that's right. Exactly. Do with that monument. And I think that's an important key. That Somebody is that really feel something about this. Yeah, makes yeah. A difference. Yeah. Well, you know, it's funny about the bill, though. I mean, I think with this current bill that's underway, if, if people read it, see, I I was able to download the bill. It's very just short. It's short. It's only about a paragraph long. Uh, the bill that seeks to uh, replace. Yeah, uh, like, get, get, get read it. Get read it to you. Yeah, let me read it to you. Uh, it yeah. says the governor, and this is what I find interesting about it. Says the governor shall annually issue a proclamation setting apart the second Monday in October as Indigenous Peoples Day, and recommending that it be observed by the people with appropriate exercises in the schools, and otherwise to acknowledge the history of genocide and right. discriminate discrimination against Indigenous peoples and to recognize and celebrate the thriving cultures and continued resistance and resilience of indigenous peoples and their tribal nations. Because that's the, that's, that's the kicker now, genocide. So I, I, when I'm reading it, I'm reading it as not, it's not going to be a very positive, it doesn't sound to me it's going to be a positive holiday, what they're trying to replace. It's going to be a negative one. They're going to focus on the, the injustice. Mm -hmm. the, and, and this injustice is quite extensive, right? Because you're talking mass murder, or you're talking systemic uh, the, the the killing or the elimination of an ethnic group, which would be the Indians. You know, they're, they're equating it to 
the Holocaust of World War II, the Armenian Holocaust in World War I. And um, so that's what I get from it. I get from this that it's not going to be something where you're going to parade people up and down the, the avenues. Or you something know? to celebrate, to celebrate. Yeah, right. It's not yeah, exactly. It's, right. it's, 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 it's the opposite. It's the, right. They're, they're going to try to, uh, you know, uh, reinforce the hatred of America, the hatred of right. our development. That's what I get out of it. And this falls right into Howard Zinn's ideology. Yes. Where yep. try to right. say America is a bad place. And we and we're we're. Uh, we're the hope of the world, as far as I'm concerned, and what we've done here in this country, in spite of the things that we didn't do as well as we could. Right. You know, if, if we all spent our lives focusing on the negative, we all be miserable people. Exactly. We never would gain anything. And this is what they're coming. Now, how did that first sentence go? Did it say regular, uh, something 12V would be? Replaced? Well, it says the governor shall annually issue a proclamation setting apart the second Monday. Yeah, but you, something's missing. The one I read had 12V, which is the right, which was the regulation that they passed years ago to recognize. It's there. It's the included. It says chapter six of the general laws is hereby amended by striking out section 12V. There the, you go. There yeah. you go. So guess yeah. what 12V, 12V is recognizing on the second Monday, Christopher Columbus. So they cleverly didn't even use the word Christopher Columbus. If they said we're going to eliminate Christopher Columbus holiday, no, they just said 12V will be amended. Exactly, exactly. They, exactly. So, so they're not even making a statement. We're going to execute Columbus. We're going to eliminate it. They even stayed away from it the way they uh, referred to in that bill, which is very disingenuous also. It is. It's basically, you're right about that. What they're doing is they're just rewriting section 12V because they're going to they insert the other language there. Right. So that's what yeah, happens. It's Christopher right. Columbus. <laughs> So yeah, yeah, when I heard, I was surprised by that too. I thought it'd be longer, or they would try to say, want to you know talk about the the history, the culture, the traditions. None of that. This is basically about right. that the, the settlement of the United States was very very bad, and it was right. you know it, we exploited, we, we murdered, to you know, you about it, and we're going to make you pay for it exactly. And and, and, and we we would want to recognize our heritage through Columbus Day in a positive right. way. We have the right. parades, et cetera. Right. And we want them to recognize their heritage. Yes, it's a very right. proud one. Right. And it's, it's almost like two different approaches, which is not uh, in conjunction with what we should be doing together. And we, we're proponents of their special holiday. We think yeah. they should have a holiday. Yeah. You know, I don't know any Italian American right, that's not, that doesn't have empathy or sympathy for indigenous people. And everybody I talk to, like me and you and everyone else, we do think you need to set aside a day and celebrate their culture, celebrate their traditions, but don't take out Columbus Day. Don't hurt right. one group to benefit another. And I think that's what it's all about. Right. And that's not fair. Anybody with common sense. Well, that doesn't sound fair. No, no. We, we know we have our own history of oppression that we very yeah. much aware of, too. Yeah. Right. So uh, but we don't want to play who's more oppressed game. That's a wasted energy, too. But this, the group that we have that really has written a letter to us. It's called the Native American Guardian Association, NAGA. And it's uh, out in North Dakota. And the Native American Guardian Association wrote a statement explaining it is in favor of Columbus Day and Indigenous Peoples Day on two separate days, sharing the view of the Italian American Defense League and all other Italian organizations. Tony Henson, Henson of the Illinois Confederate Tribes himself, a member of the Cherokee Nation, and president of the Native American Guardian Association writes in that organization's formal statement, on behalf of our national organization, we support the proposal of Italian American Defense League to maintain the current Columbus Day holiday and designate another day to celebrate Indigenous Peoples Day. We believe that all races and historic figures should be celebrated for their contributions to our nation. Very positive statement. Very positive. Yeah. We're not, none of this gets presented. We only hear from the um, the UAINE from Massachusetts is basically has a, presents it the way you read these, this uh, law, which is such a negative way. And they should even think about that if they're going to present something. And so we're trying to say, you know, not everybody thinks or feels the same way they do. And nobody knows that. So my job and yours and others like us, we're trying to enlighten people. Trying to educate them is the way to go. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if I was a senator, if I was a member of the, of the legislature and somebody presented me this bill, I would I'd, I'd have to vote against it, you know, because it's not it's not. If, I mean, the, the the concept is directed at kids. You know what I'm saying? And you're going to tell you're going to teach kids to be to feel really bad about your country, to feel really bad about the history of the United States, the settlement, the pioneer period, which, you know, 
when I was growing up, that was celebrated. You know, you would celebrate the pioneer spirit. That was the whole thing. You know, uh, remember the TV shows that we used to watch, you know, Davy Crockett, you'd have a uh, uh, little Daniel Boone, <laughs> Daniel Boone. Yeah, right. Exactly. Right. And then, uh, what's his name with uh, all his kids? It was, uh, he was a pioneer too. Um, Landry. Yeah, right, right, right. And so, his, his seven <laughs> kids that he had going uh, west. But the whole, you're right. That was all p- pioneer spirit. We still use to this day to yeah. compliment somebody who started something from the beginning with nothing and made something right. wonderful out of it. Um, and you know, this whole idea about history to teach. See, they're using the concept as that. Well, we don't want to whitewash our history. Right. When we, it's how you want to present it, but we're not saying you're not supposed to talk about these things. Like they think that the fact that 1619, we don't agree with that, but well, that means you don't want to talk about slavery and you're going to act like it never happened. No, we're not. It's no, right. We're all right, going to play, right. create this country. We can talk about that. We're not advocating we should have had more slaves or something like that. It's ridiculous. So <laughs> no one's whitewashing it, but you're taking it in a tent, just as you said, Truman, you're trying to create this negative perception that what we did as a country, you're going to feel bad. And if I was a 10 year old kid reading that type of statement, it's almost like uh, developing in this kind of sense of self-hate. Self-hate, right. I wouldn't do that to my kid. Right. No, no, no. It's not fair. to them. It's, not, it's not accurate either. When you look at it, what happened to so many of the Indians where they, it was a smallpox virus, uh, killed a lot of them. Uh, that was Amen unfortunate. Them. We can see this with coronavirus, obviously. You know, what happens is your body's not ready for it, and this happened to them. Uh, and so it's not, it's not accurate. And even when it's funny too, when I talk to people about their ethnic backgrounds, they will tell me sometimes they have a quarter Cherokee in them, a quarter Iroquois in them or something like that. So obviously grandma, very proud of them, very proud. And grandma and grandpa must've been uh, European and Indian and they got together. So obviously there's not, it wasn't all violence. It wasn't all uh, mayhem and murder and all these other kinds of negative, um, negative uh, connotations of history you can you can you can interpret history any way you want you can return you can in- interpret it negatively you can distort it you can do all kinds of things to it and uh, that's what i think this bill is about this bill really is to um distort the pioneering history of the united states to distort the settlement period um which was so important in new england by the way which was so important to where, where you're from and uh that's what right. okay and yeah. what, to go along with that theme, I found out that the particular group in Massachusetts referred to the day after Thanksgiving as the unThanksgiving day. <laughs> uh, yeah. nothing, nothing positive that we can say that came out of those conflicts or whatever. And, and even, even Abe Lincoln, who made Thanksgiving part of our uh, national mindset, was to create something positive that we give thanks to something as Americans and what we create as a country. He did it for the moral support. Yeah. Those things are important. Yeah. yeah. It, 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 that takes on its own history. Right. Forget about what happened in 1620 now, but the fact that Thanksgiving was made as a holiday in, in 1863, I think, or 60, whenever he did it. Right. That's that's its own history in, its, in, in itself, for what that means to us as Americans. Yes. Yeah. Thanks every right. day for right. being Americans. Right. So and there's nothing about, you know, it, it, to know, understand the contributions the Indians made to the pilgrims and to whoever it is. In our settlement, uh, the way the, the bill right now in Massachusetts is, it's not really going to look at that. It's going to just look at just the violence, the 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 uh, the discord, and and uh, the conflicts. That's very sad, I think. But I think you're doing. It's great that you're there uh, lobbying uh, and um, getting involved with it. And uh, you have so many conflicts there right now. It's just like you're. It's typical. But you're not alone, which is good. You might feel good about that in one respect. In Massachusetts, New York all over the place, you're facing the same problem. And um, what I wanted to ask you also was about the statue, the Columbus statue, which was there in Boston. Um, it got, you could tell everybody what happened to it uh, in 2020, but it was very sad. Yeah, it, 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 it's had some experiences even before 2020 that yeah. was, uh, new paint was dumped on it. You know, some vile thing was written on it over the years, but it's basically in the 2000s that happened. It was didn't happen. It was it's been there since 1979, I believe. Right, right, and right. It was dedicated by the North End uh, community, which is at that time was probably still 85 percent Italian and had a long history of being the right. North End of Boston, and uh, with all people that contributed to it, which is all these statues had that kind of history. But then in 2020, it was got de- decapitated. Yes, Somebody yes. knocked the head off. Yeah, during the whole. Uh, George Floyd 
protests in they call them protests in some cases. But oh, they yeah, yeah. They destroyed yeah. things in Boston, too. They went right down a couple of streets and broke store windows and everything else. And, and so this fervor that said, we got to fight against systemic racism, he became the scapegoat throughout the country. And so our statue got, got uh, vandalized. And it, it's now been off that um, granite base for two years and is sitting in a warehouse. And we're supposed to have a dialogue as to how to get it back there. But we, we're not finding much uh, enthusiasm by right. the city of Boston right. to, because they still have the negative concept in their mind that it, it represents something that they don't want to promote. Well, it was there at Waterfront Park, right? So it was there, like, since 1979, it was, it was, it was erected there. Uh, and it was a nice, it was a beautiful statue. And um, it, got, it got decapitated in the, the period of uh, uh, when, the, after the uh, uh, arrest and the death of George Floyd. And uh, it looked like the mayor, I that was Marty, what was, was Marty Walsh was the mayor, right, in Boston. That's correct, yeah. And it looked like he, it seemed like he was, you know, he was willing to say that's gone and we're going we're gonna to let it go, basically. And there was some talk or discussion with him. But then he went to uh, work in Washington when Biden was uh, elected president, when he became president. Then you had the two mayors after him. But it seemed to me, at least, I, again, I'm not in Massachusetts, I'm not in Boston. But it seemed to me that, you know, from right after that happened, that was it. That he's not going to try to bring it back. He's not going to try to restore the statue in any way. I, did anybody? Was anybody arrested? That was my curiosity. Has anybody ever been arrested for that? No, no. Yeah, that's a that's a Nobody big got problem. Arrested. Right? Yeah. And there was there was a detective that investigated. I found out, but I never found it that they came up with anything. Uh, but there have been some past experiences that there were some teenagers that got oh, yeah. um, caught yeah. years ago doing something similar to it. And this is what usually is done. It's always a young person who knows nothing about history that thinks they're doing something noble and uh, and they create these types of acts. But Marty Walsh at that time, we he was dealt with to have that statue repaired and replaced. OK. And there was a dialogue to discuss this. And he would not make any final decision unless he had a dialogue with the Italian American organization. It was a community neighborhood community group that got together right away. And he said, but please don't do any protests. Don't make any campaigns because right now things are very tight and sensitive. This is October after the summer of peace and love. So there was a decision not to, to make a, uh, um, a, a demonstration, a protest demonstration at America. the base. Right. Oh, I see. Okay. And we listened to him and we said, well, we won't do that. But you definitely, but I'll get back to you and I will not make any final decision unless we have a discussion about this. That was it. No discussion. Mm. Mm. So then time goes by and he eventually uh, um, goes down to Washington and we have two new mayors that took his place and they have no part of that dialogue or conversation. And they just ignored it uh, every time we try to bring it up. And unfortunately, he didn't pass any uh, advice on to anybody. It's hard to hold him accountable, uh, especially when he's not around anymore. And then uh, the city council, the head of the city council was uh, Janie. She takes his position because that's the way he leaves. Someone fills a spot. That's right. What sure. Was. Uh, she becomes mayor of Boston. First yeah, yeah. female African-American. Right. Yeah. Historical. Well, she then has to now go into a special election and, and she has to run a primary. She loses the primary. Right. And. So now she's not even going to be mayor. So there's going to be another election that she's not even be running into because that left only two candidates, which she wasn't one. So she did something what I, which I call very sneaky and underhanded. And whatever her reason is to almost be vindictive to her. Yeah, it's very spiteful. It's often not to take a personal. Yeah, yeah, she, yeah she, very she, spiteful. She, right. she did it. She uh, October 6th, the day just before, before the election, she'd have to go out. She had already been colluding with the indigenous people, had the thing all set up, and in one day uh, announced from a Tuesday to a Wednesday an executive order to eliminate Columbus Day right. in lieu of Indigenous Peoples Day. And made a big presentation, signed the executive order, and essentially said to the Italian community that she already talked to people in the North End, which we have not been able to find any conversation. No, of course not, right. She said, she said uh, it's a zero-sum game how you play this thing. and uh, we, But it's not to be disrespectful to the Italian-American community, even though we, are, we understand your pride and your heritage, but 
she just left out in parentheses, we don't care. <laughs> and we're going to eliminate it anyways. I mean, they make statements like that, that they can just dismiss it by saying, we know that this is important to you. But what did you do? You just told yeah, us. I know. Right. Right. And, and, and then uh, it, and then the new mayor comes in and the last thing she wants to do is deal with this executive order because she's got other things in her mind. So, of course. So in the meanwhile, we're, we're saying, OK, no, no Columbus Day officially in Boston, but we got a pending law the city and committee that they'll eliminate it on a state level. <laughs> so if we don't fix that, what are we fighting for a city audience right. when we right. lose the whole state? So right. of course, that's right. why we spent time now working on the state to make sure Good, that yeah. it doesn't. Well, these, uh, these, uh, these politicians you're mentioning, you know, the, the Janie and Wu and, I'm, and, I, and, I, and some others, uh, they didn't they march in the Columbus Day Parade or whatever festival you're having there? Weren't they participants and enthusiastic? Always. Oh, sure they're wearing, you know, red, white, and green or whatever it was. And uh, uh, they, they just walk down the play yeah, every year. I've attended them and I've seen them. In fact, the last one my wife and I went to was uh, two years ago before the pandemic started, which canceled two years of the play. But son of a gun. That would be 2000, not 21, because that thing started. 2019. Uh, 2019. Right. There they were. The same <laughs> ones that will be voting to eliminate it were marching down as city councilors, as uh, uh, senators, whatever, waving to everybody, shaking hands and making sure they're seen as they march down. Maybe they were there, maybe they were, maybe they were there for the Italian food. Did you guys have a, <laughs> well, a the, grill? You no, know, the restaurants are just filled. It's like 90 right, that's restaurants. Right, right. That's right. That's you don't right. have to even get, do anything. Right. Enough. right. That's what they're doing. And it's yeah, always true. been that way. And it's yeah, fine. Yeah. That's what you yeah. say, Patrick's Day. They, they do right. it with all the phrase. Right. Yeah. Right, right. So you had also the, the one. It's funny you brought that up because you had the person who represented that area was Lydia Edwards. We know, and that she was the representative on city council for I guess what was that the would that be East Boston that she represented or what was these actual sections she represented? Actually, three sections: East Boston, North End, and Charlestown. Now that's still. I mean, I know that's changed. The numbers have changed. The demographic shifts as always, but it's still got a significant number of Italian Americans that still live there. I'm assuming. I mean, just uh, East Boston particularly, but the North yeah. End. Is, it's not even that big anymore. But it's the percentages are all smaller now than what it used to be. Right. Right. And this would be unheard of. Somebody from that district would, would go against it. Right. And she put. A, she actually went on uh, record of saying that, and this is the term that she used, which really got my goat when she said. Uh, it's time that the Italian community move on disconnects themselves from yeah. Columbus. Yeah. Right. And now she and I'm saying, really, this is something that you have a right to say to us that you're going to lecture to us that we should disconnect from him after all these years. And that is good enough for you to uh, just to eliminate Christopher Columbus Day. So it's just, again, another insensitive statement. Yeah. She just she said this on her social media site, right? I think she said it on her Facebook page. She said or it on it social media. She said it on the news. She said it was written. It was on Facebook. And I wrote a letter basically uh, saying I did not approve of her position at all. And she's not being right. sensitive right. to it. It was a letter I wrote and put on Facebook, put in the North End newspaper and uh, other sites. And when I posted it on her Facebook, it took two days for it to be removed. So. Well, yeah, we published that letter uh, yes, on, on Primo's website, and uh, you know, was was just amazing about it was um, how she just makes this claim, and then you respond to it, and it's just censorship. You know, she just doesn't allow; she's not going to allow anybody to chime in with a different opinion, a different point of view. And what was even amazing about it, I found, was that how, and you're seeing this happening more and more. They're telling us who we need to celebrate. Right. Right. Yeah. We want to celebrate Columbus. I'm sorry, guys, you can't we celebrate this person instead. Celebrate that person instead. I mean, why are you telling us who we should celebrate? We don't tell you who to celebrate. And why are you telling us to celebrate? And this is something that I find really, uh, really interesting. You know, uh, that was that was why that statement yeah, really. Brought right. me. You're so right. Imagine telling the people in South Boston they can't celebrate St. Patrick's Day anymore because um, he's really not Irish or something. Yeah, right, 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 right. Of course, right. he's born in Britain. He wasn't right. born in Ireland. He was sent off to Ireland as a slave, and that's how he ended up being in right. Another right. interesting history. But how about Martin Luther King? I don't think you should celebrate him because we right. found Malcolm him. X or anybody of that fact. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It'd be very offensive. Yeah. Yeah, of course it would be. Yeah. It's not really it's not really their business to tell us who do we have to celebrate. You know, we celebrate Columbus because uh, we find him heroic. We know that his record has been distorted. 
terribly distorted, by the way. You know, and you, all the sources, uh, uh, not all, the sources that are that they use, the Howard Zinn and these other people that they use, that's been distorted. That's been unfairly right. uh, maligned, and uh, and that's just the way that's been. And now you went to you went to school in Boston College, correct? No, Boston University. Boston University, and Howard Zinn. Was a professor there. Was a professor there. Did you ever take, you didn't take classes from him, did you? Or I, I had one class with him. For oh, you did? Oh, and okay. I, and, I used to, and he was always on campus with a couple, another professor that escapes my memory right now what his name was, but they were big anti-Vietnam uh, heroes at the time, leading the students in protests, making sure they get arrested and do things that would make the point. Of course, he never was in those situations to be arrested. And uh, he became a hero. And he took that charismatic role that he played, and that's what he is, very charismatic. And, and you got to remember that his background was a card-carrying communist. Yeah. And even though he fought in World War II, he basically had an ideology about our country not being an except, exceptional nation, and that they're responsible for a lot of um, bad things that happens throughout the world internationally. He even found a way to say that we were almost supporting Hitler in World War II when you read his book. Yeah. He's trying to say, you know, you're not as good as you think you are, guys. And so he said, how am I going to prove this? Well, let me start with Columbus. First chapter, 1492, Western Silk. They come over with all their bad ideas from Western Silk, and they bring it to the New World. And, uh, and, and they brought all their systemic uh, racism and everything yeah, else that sure, still yeah. permeates yeah. that's how he wrote his history book that's yeah. not history that's a that's an opinion piece that he's he uh, uh covers with italian facts i mean uh, historical facts that he misquotes on top of it so yeah. mary mary graver you know all about her yeah sure yeah yeah just two years ago yeah uh -huh. debunking Howard Zinn, right mm -hmm. exposing the fake history that turned a generation against america right this is the number one selling history book in our school system, not this one, but the one he wrote. And so what do you think our kids are being taught right now? It's basically that bill that you wrote, that's what they're reading, how evil the United States is and the things, awful things they did. And they take it totally out of context. You know, we truly think about this. None of us probably wish we lived in 1492 in the world at that time. All uh, right. Sure. Brutal place. Yeah, right. Wherever you were, civilization, renaissance, I don't care. But what we did to each other as human beings back then was normal. It was atrocious. Right. We had slavery. It was everywhere. We didn't invent it. And it, it was, so how, we, so how, why do we talk about the Roman? Oh, look what they built, the Colosseum. Well, guess what they did? They killed out millions of people. They had slaves. But we, we admire their empire. Oh, Genghis Khan. Biggest empire ever, Mongolia. He killed more people than ever. Are we supposed to not talk about him anymore? We talk about these empires in a heroic, historical fashion and as if they did only good things. But, but that's history. The that's pyramids. The we should knock down the pyramids. You know how many slaves built the pyramids? But we go there on our tours and we go, oh, look at the pyramids. Right, right, right. Give me a break. Right. I mean, they, yeah, this right. is such progressive uh, what's it, revisionist history out it of is, context. Yeah. And it, yeah. It's just all wrong. It's yeah. just all wrong. It was all over the and place. I'm a, I'm a history major. I love yeah. history. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 So you know, you know what's going on then. Exactly. Right. Yeah. I mean, slavery was just so prevalent back then. The the wars that people had with uh tribal folks and everything else was was on, all over the place. It was in Africa, it was in even South America, in it was in America. Asia, it was everywhere. It was all even over the, the place. Uh, even the the uh, American Indians and yeah. they were here yeah. before we even showed up, they were enslaving each other. Yeah. And it's all historically uh, Proven. Even when we we were here with them, they were enslaving African Americans at that time and bringing enslaving them. Well, well, the, our history was prevalent at the time. They because they you know that was normal. When you when you beat somebody who's your foe, you don't say okay we'll make a treaty and you beat this. No, they kill each other. They don't want them to come back and hurt them. And the Euro natives, what they did to their own tribes up there uh, in the Iroquois nation, they had. They would annihilate the other tribe if they could. Yeah, right. Of course. Yeah. It's, it's called survival of the fittest. Exactly. I, I'm not going to condemn them. Right. That was the times. That was the mentality. I, right. Today, if they did that, sure, we would never accept it. Right. Of course.
Right, right. So it's putting it all in context, and that's how you that's how you learn from history. You learn the good and the bad, so you don't repeat it. You know, you don't repeat the bad. But uh, exactly, true. just yeah. to automatically say that one person is, he didn't do anything good, it's just all bad because he had these certain sins. Uh, yeah, it doesn't it's not, it doesn't end well for anybody when we look, when we go that down that road. You know, so well, that's for sure. Yeah, that's true. well, you know, it's funny about Massachusetts though, because uh, you know, it's just um, you you you're facing up against not only the political class but also the media class and just the distortion of just the history there. And I think this is very important that uh, I, I noticed this in Philadelphia because it wasn't just Columbus. They were trying to take down um, Frank Rizzo, the mayor of Philadelphia. The they first did take him down. Yeah, they, 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 take, they did take down a statue. They, took, they, had, they had a mural of him in um, South Street, Philly, and they had to whitewash that over. So what I gathered from that event, from that whole conflict was it was they want to take they were they're trying to destroy the statues, they're trying to destroy the uh, they're trying to take away the holiday, obviously. And they're involved in a legal dispute, legal uh, manner there, but also take take away the Italian American uh, political history. Of Philadelphia, right. Rizzo was a was a, was a heavyweight mayor. He was a very powerful uh, figure. And, and that's also what they're doing. And at yeah. that time, it was in the 70s, if I remember, it was uh, law and order was the motto, you know, under Nixon, et cetera. Right, right. Because right. urban uh, unrest, et cetera. And he was a tough, he was a tough mayor. Yeah, right. And then you had, yeah, right. So that's what, they, so that's, and so they're doing the same. What I know is interesting, I want to bring up to you, because I was doing some research about uh, the situation up in Boston, and I was researching the, um, the statue in uh, at uh, a, a Christopher Columbus Waterfront Park, and it's how they're distorting it, how they're slanting it, how they're trying to make it seem like it's it's a, it's a very bad thing that happened. Um, if you go on Wikipedia, very easy, just go and check it out. I just did a periphery search of it, <clears throat> and I was reading about how the person who wrote about the statue and how it was erected there at Christopher Columbus Waterfront Park, and they mentioned a man by the name of Arthur Stivaletta, uh, and they say automatically that the Knights of Columbus, a Catholic organization, dominated by Italian Americans, opened Waterfront Park in 1976. In 1979, pro-Vietnam War activists <laughs> and building contractor Arthur Stivaletta commissioned the statue. And the Knights accordingly changed the name of the park to the Christopher Columbus Waterfront Park. Then they say this, as they say that, the, um, conversely, other Catholics in Boston apparently did not appreciate the use of Columbus. In 1922, the Irish American Cardinal, William Henry O'Connell, removed a statue of Columbus from the Cathedral of Holy Cross. So I'm not sure what that even has to do with anything, but it's this distortion. They're slanting it. They're trying to make it a negative thing that happened when you erected the statue there in Christopher Columbus Park at the Waterfront Park by the, uh, the Knights of Columbus. And they just go on to other things. It was like the, at one point in time, they're they saying that the director of the Massachusetts Historical Society I published an op-ed back in 1999 in Boston Globe saying that the, uh, he called for the statue to be removed noting that Boston has no historical connection to Christopher Columbus. He suggested restoring the park to commemorate its historical use as a fishing wharf. So, you know, it's just, uh, it's, and this is, must be, somebody submitted it to probably to Wikipedia. It's the distortion of history, distortion of the Italian-American history. In Boston. What, what do you think they're implying about Stiv Stivaletta? I think Stephen Lewis, they're probably, probably they're, they're implying that he's a racist, that he's part of you know, the John Birch Society, right wing. Yeah. yeah. They, they also yeah, were yeah. you know, piggybacking on the busing issue at Boston at the time, which had, had issues about segregation of the school system. Yeah, right, right, right. So, you know, every ethnic community had their own particular neighborhoods, very, very uh, um, parochial. So you had the Irish in Charlestown, Italians in East Boston, North End, South Boston was Irish. You had Roxbury, Mattapian, which was uh, African-American and that type of thing. Then we have the busing issue. So they, they, they cloaked his wanting to honor Christopher Columbus for the Italian-American community in the North End was to make a racial epithet against somebody of color. Right, right. At the time. So they make this leap that that's what that was trying to do as opposed to something that they're honoring and recognizing and doing something that had to do with the pride in our Italian heritage in the North End. Because for a good 80, 90 years, that was a Italian American community that was built in all that time period. And sure you have pride in what your ethnic groups, and it's in that area. The, the waterfront is where we had all 
the Italian Sicilian fishermen fishing every day. It was an Italian neighborhood for almost, well, it is almost 100 years now. And so it was not like pulled out of left field. There was a natural connection. But right. they, their protest was to paint it in this other way of dishonoring them right. to say, right. this is another reason why it wasn't done correctly for the right reason in the first place, says them. Right. And, and they, have, they have no issue about slandering people, truly. Yes, it's it's yeah. just so offensive. Right. Right. And you know, I'm telling you, the Italian American community is an easy mark. They make yeah. the call us gangsters, mafia bosses, and everything else. Right. And, and uh, we, got all, we got all the derogatory words that you know, right. etc. Right. And right. I've seen skits on TV that makes fun of being Italian with oh, the yeah. accents, the behavior. You try to do that with another group, and you'll, you'll be... Uh, You'll be sensitive and you lose your job. And that oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. On. Particularly nowadays, you bet. Sure. That's right. Yeah. And yeah. It's still going on to this it day. Is. It is. It I is. saw a Saturday Night skit that was just totally offensive. They, they had it on three years ago. Totally offensive to Italian-Americans. Yeah. They yeah. laughed. They thought it was a, a, sure. a, something that they could laugh at because who are we? We're just friendly Italian-Americans that they think are... Uh, fashionable. You know, it's funny you said that because I was on a uh, social media site and uh, there was a, a there's some, they were celebrating the uh, a, a place in San Francisco called De, Dago Mary's, I think. And I said, I just for fun, I just said, you know, it's offensive. It is offensive. more people. Right, exactly. I had more people of, of, of Northern European stock, Germanic, Irish, Scottish, whatever it was, <clears throat> defend that, in other words, saying that oh, you're getting too sensitive about it. That's it's, it's there's nothing wrong with this. We all, it's uh, you know, uh, don't hold the cr don't hold a grudge. Don't hold don't bear the cross. Don't uh, you know this isn't as offensive as you're thinking of. It was a nice place to go and eat. Why are you getting so offended by it? In other words, they were defending the idea that they they could call a place like that Dago Mary. But if you said something else about it, if you said you know if they if they pointed to some other ethnic group that they uh, that uh, had a, a negative connotation associated with it. Well, then they would, of course, uh, be against you for uh, defending. You know Without what I'm saying? Yeah, Without yeah, a right, 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 right. If we use double standard. Other, yeah. Oh, yeah. So that's so. Yeah. If we use every yeah. other offensive word for every other ethnic group and called it that, and I could think of all the words, and I don't want to go ahead and say yeah, them. Right, of course not. I could right. go right down the whole thing and say, let's right. open up a restaurant with that name. Yeah. And and, and tell the other that what do you get so, so upset? You know, the other thing I'm funny is when they said, uh, "What are you so upset about the name Dago Mari?" You know. Yeah. You guineas are really just too sensitive. I mean, they might as well just say that at the same time. <laughs> right, exactly, right. That's how that's how ludicrous that is now that you right. share that one. Right, right, right. exactly. That's how, yeah. that's how I think yeah. it's been so dismissive. They're right. taking us for granted. And exactly. we are strong, proud Americans. Yes, right. And they are just not uh, being respectful in any way when... Uh, right. Boy, right. that was a perfect example that you exactly. Oh yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's the way it is. All those. So what? So what's next up? What are you going to try to do? Are you gonna, you're still lobbying up there uh, for this for the state. You're going to you're still going to try to um, uh, stop the uh, the change of uh, holidays. Uh, what other things do you think you might be, you might be on the works for you to try to uh, you know stem the tide, try to fight the good fight? Well, we take it one at a time. Yeah, that's and, we got to. Uh, fingers in a lot of different things and uh it's all volunteer people making an effort but we really also spent a lot of time creating programs or events as an organization like many of the other Italian organizations listed on that uh the 25 that we we do a lot of things to promote our culture and uh have festivals and events uh, we just had one done by the Amici group that's part of our Italian American Alliance and we did it at the Sons of Italy in Watertown, and we had an opera singer come from Italy that one of our members brought and had dinner, et cetera. And it was, a, it was like having Pavarotti there. <laughs> he was that good. Yeah. And we just had a spectacular night. And these are things that we also take a lot of pride in advancing because we really believe we contribute a lot from our Italian culture to um, our American culture on a, a regular basis. It, 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 there's so much that we have uh, brought to this country and still do. And, uh, the, and, and at the same time, we are very active with the Conference of Presidents, which I'm a member of uh, the Italian American Alliance. And we're actually going to meet with the ambassador uh, in Italy, in Rome, in May. Oh. And it's the first time any Italian organizations of 55 different organizations were invited to uh, come to Italy and, 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 and have special events with them. Because we're trying to show that this is a it's a connection between our birthplace in a sense 
our cousins. And last June, I think it was the parliament actually made a pro proclamation to yeah. support mm -hmm. our efforts to uh, protect and preserve our history and Christopher Columbus and the statues. And they say, because they really honor the man, they still have high esteem for him. And Genoa does. I think even in the Bahamas, they recognize him as a oh, hero, yeah. somebody there. But they, you, you won't hear that from other people. They just think that he's what they want. These people want him to 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 be considered, and he's a heroic figure worldwide. Yeah, we yeah. just got a problem here because it fits a political narrative. It does. Yeah. If you want to fight systemic racism, you need a figure, and so he's one of the easiest. Uh, low hanging fruit that they could grab because there's more statues of Columbus than any other statue. We got the Columbia D District of Columbia. America almost was going to be called Columbia before America. He's right. Yeah. Right. Brought his hands on it. Right. They stole Columbus's work. And and then what was the first spaceship that goes to the moon? Columbia. Yeah. Columbia. Yeah. <laughs> they know the nature of what it means. It's opening new worlds, finding things, bringing worlds together that have never been before. It's always been a historic figure and they've just trashed it because they have an agenda. Yeah. And I don't know how they can escape it. Even those doors in the, in the halls of Congress are the Columbus doors. Yeah, you sure. Yeah. The, the artwork where those were built. Well, they that was uh, those down. Yeah. That was all built in 17. That was began in 1792 to commemorate the 300th right. anniversary. Exactly. Yeah. Another commemoration. Yeah. And the first coin we ever had had Columbus on yeah. in the United States. <laughs> it's, talk about whitewashing hi history. They're trying to just eradicate something only for political reasons. Yes. And I think that's the last point that's why uh, there's got to be a better way than how this should be handled and still make your political point and do things that have to do with social injustice, etc. And it doesn't have to be this way. Yeah, I agree. You got we have to. And we just have a we just have to keep at it. And uh, the Italian American community, we have to keep on. We have to educate. We have to lobby. We have to just uh, it's a serious battle. And we have to be we're on the front lines of it. You're absolutely right about it. We're the ones that are uh, that are facing this for, for really for America, because that's really what it's about. If you can take down Columbus, then what's next? You can take down the founding fathers. You can take down everybody before you know it. We're not going to have a country anymore. We're not going to have a history anymore. Yeah, true. And truly, I've talked to a non-Italian friends of mine. They, and I tell them this because they're not paying attention to this at all. It might not even be an issue wherever they live. They don't understand it. Yeah. They said, why do they want to take, for those reasons, what? Clump, it, what are they, that's not right. I mean, that's my answers I get. It has nothing to do with being Italian. It's just yeah. on itself. They say, this man is a part of the world's history. And I don't understand why it's become a, a lightning rod. But, yeah. you know, the a certain group politically, that that's what they want to use it for. Yeah, absolutely. Well. Well, that's what it's all about. Yeah, absolutely. So we got a, a big fight on our hands, but we're fighting it out. And, that's, and it's, it's so good what you're doing up there in Massachusetts and what everybody's doing. We're just uh, we're keeping at it. We're, we're, we're combating it. We're doing the best we can. We're doing it the right way, too, through education, through right. communication, and through, uh, and through political uh, activism. That's really what it's all truly, about. Truly, your publication is wonderful. You do a great job getting Thank you very stories. much. I, I just hope, I wish you could get more exposure to it. I do too, and, yeah. I, I want everybody to check it out. Yeah. And because and, uh, you, you cover the stories very well and you keep, it's a current event of what's happening. And Robert Petroni is a wonderful person who's become a, 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 an eye, a, a special, um, is that the word witness or expert? In the yeah, whole, a brilliant expert. He really is. He's got a legal background. He's just amazing. Right. Yeah. And he yeah. knows the history inside. Yes. Out. Yeah. And in fact, mm -hmm. they used him as the, uh, an expert on Columbus in yeah. the Philadelphia case when they brought it to court. You know, you yeah, right. he's got him. Robert's got so much passion and he's got so much information. He's just really uh, quite amazing. Yeah. I, I really appreciate everything he's done too. Like, like well, that's great, too. wonderful. So it's the so that when people look up on the website, they have to look up www.theitalianamericanalliance.com. Correct. Yes, it's good. Got to put that the. You got to put the in there, right? So that's good. And that's when we found somebody else had that name, and you know. That's always right, a problem. Right, so. right. And then you can know they can always find updates and they can get it's involved. It's on Facebook also. It's also on okay. Facebook. Good. All right. Great. And they can always yeah. go there and then figure things out. Well, that's great. Well, well, Tom, I want to thank you very much for joining me today and all the work you're doing in Massachusetts. We're all supporting you. We're going to help you any way we can. I mean, just so just never hesitate, of course. Uh, we'll do all we can to help Massachusetts win these battles because uh, Massachusetts is a great state. We've got so many great Italians there. Uh, you know, when I think of Massachusetts, I think of the Prince Spaghetti commercial. 
Well, it started here in Boston. That, it started that, right, exactly. That's just, you know, very Christmas, fast. What I think started of right in Boston. Yeah, it's a pasta company. It's a great story in that commercial uh, by uh, uh, Anthony Martinetti. Yeah, he's now, he's, uh, passed away. He was yeah, uh, yeah that was he's an immigrant that came into the North End. He was from Italy, and he became the that that little boy running Anthony. It, it wins and now he runs across the uh, runs across the neck. He was able to hear his mother on the other side of. I know, <laughs> but and that was pretty common for just to yell out the window of where you. Right. Yeah. Are. Right. Right. And, right. Uh, and it was Wednesday. Wednesday became traditionally Prince Spaghetti Day on yeah, Wednesday. Right. So right. everybody, whether you're Italian or American, you had spaghetti on Wednesday. Because yeah. Yeah. It's probably one of the most popular commercials ever created. That was big for me because he was about the same age as I was. So I would run and I would check this out. If, you know, this kid that was a star, basically. And it was just he would run through the streets. You look back at it now, it was almost like Naples or something like that. But it was in Boston, you know, right there with a the bocce court and the guys wearing the fedora, fedora hats and the, and the went market. Through the, went, went through the fruit market, hay market, et cetera. And that was really what the neighborhood looked like then. Yeah. It, very had a, it always had a European uh, feel to it. Even to sure. this day, I bring people from across the uh, pond and they – Love um, the North End because it has that character to it. It's bright. It's lively. It's full yeah. of uh, life. And you walk up and down the streets and it feels like you're in uh, uh, parts of Europe, uh, too. But the smaller yeah. streets and the smaller, older buildings and with a lot of uh, character. It has a lot of character there, and because it and and the much and the Italians were the ones that contributed to that character. They're the ones that helped to really make yeah. that the city it is today. Yeah, it really. Yeah, really and, done and, it. And, and I could write a book. <laughs> on all these businesses that started from fruit stands, from butcher shops to groceries, the stop and shop that people know as a big grocery store. Yeah, sure. Uh, started in the North End with a little grocery that? store from that? a Jewish uh, uh, couple, a family. Uh, Pastine Wine, North End. Uh, you got a tremendous amount of things that came uh, th- worldwide that started right in that little ethnic neighborhood that mm. became part of a uh prince spaghetti as you know the spaghetti and, and certain it's really it's, it's a role model neighborhood because you got so many entrepreneurs that came from there so many important people that came from there right. that contributed uh, that uh, contributed to the uh they came from tough backgrounds difficult backgrounds but they did so much uh for massachusetts and for the country and so uh we should celebrate that we should yeah. celebrate that we really Through new york etc all these yeah. uh yeah. urban cities that have these ethnic enclaves as we call them yeah. and uh, yeah it's very uh, the history of our country, because of our open approach, I mean, honestly, truly, where else can you find a country that has every ethnic group, every race, every religion accepted and living under one roof? Yes. Doesn't mean we'd fight with each other and do things at times, but we don't accept that. And right. We, no country has an open um, immigration policy. One million people a year are invited. Yeah, sure. You can't find yeah. that anywhere else in the world. You can't call us anti- we disparage yeah. ourselves as if we're just the opposite. Right. That's what exactly. frustrates you and me. Yes. Is that the young people don't understand the history we have. They're seeing only the things that didn't work right. Right. I can point those all day long. I know what they are, but we fix those. We in fix spite them. of that, we still we still do just the opposite, which is uh, benevolent. Exactly. We it's, it's, it was we had some tough times in the past, but we always, you know, we carried on. We did we did what we did, and we made this a great country. You know, that's what we should focus on. I think is the, is the progress we made and the great things we did. Versus, exactly. Truly, I agree, hundred percent. Well, Tom, thank you very much for joining me today, and uh, and I, I look forward to that trip to Italy you're going to go on with uh, yeah, Bas- yeah, Basil exactly. Russo and, uh, and the Conference of, of Presidents of Major Italian American Organizations. They're doing great work, and this is very important. I think. And Basil, and I met you down in D.C. when we met the ambassador from Italy. That's the first time she ever invited any group exclusively to something. So we are becoming uh, very proud and visible of what the work we're doing. And, I, and thank you. It's been an honor to uh, be here with you today, Truly. Oh, that's great. Well, thank you very much, Tom. All the best. God bless you. You too. You too. Thanks.